Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining me as I get ready for the day. I've had my shower. I washed my hair. I gave myself a facial. I left the product on for about 45 minutes and then I washed it off in the shower, washed my hair and my hair is just air drying as it usually does. I've done my skincare with my vitamin C serum, my moisturizer, a couple of drops of oil, and of course sunscreen. Amazing. My name is Lorraine and on my channel we talk about all kinds of things but every now and then I like to invite you to get ready with me for the day. I'm getting ready to go to a jam with my friends. Now the weather's a bit cool today but we have an option indoors in case it really is too cool or it starts to rain. So you know it looks like summer is pretty much over here where I live in Canada. I'm going to start with this CoverGirl Priming Glow Mist. This can be used as a primer or as a setting spray. And you can see that I have used it a few times. It's nice, it's very watery, and it does give a little bit of a glow. What I do is I just spray a little bit on my hand, just like this, and then I just sort of pat it into my skin. And it's, uh, it's pretty watery. It takes a while to um, kind of settle down there because I, I don't want my skin to be all sticky by the time it comes to apply my foundation. So that's the first step. And then I always start with the eyes for no particular reason. Some people start with foundation, but I like to uh, just start with the eyes. And what I'm starting with is an eyelid primer and I'm going to use concealer for that purpose. I have this little e.l.f. one which clicks the product into the brush. It's really the cutest thing. And I like to use this on the eyelids to um, provide a base for the eyeshadow and to cover up any discoloration or any um, little blood vessels or anything that are on my eyelids. So, and look at this. <laughs> I just discovered these darling little sponges and they are just so perfect for just pressing that primer, in this case, the concealer, into my eyelid, into the skin. I take it pretty much up to the brow and I just gently press it in. And this little sponge is just the cutest thing for that purpose. If I get a little bit on the skin under my eyes, I simply just work that in as well. But it's, it's a very, very little bit because I don't use concealer. I have a lot of wrinkles under my eyes. At 76, I've earned every one of them. I'm not ashamed of them. I'm kind of proud of them, actually. And I don't really believe that any concealer is going to not settle into those little fine lines. So I don't really bother with concealer. But if there is a little bit that falls down under the eye, I just work it in with this darling little sponge. And then I will take a small amount of powder and I'm just using this e.l.f. Halo Glow and I'll use this later on as my setting powder. It is a setting powder. So I will just take a little bit on this brush. This is the, the brush I use. And then I just, I just brush over my eyelids just to set that primer. And I just find that that helps the eyeshadow go on more evenly. It helps it to stay in place. And so that's what I do to uh, make a start on my eye makeup. Today I'm going to use this little single from Sephora. The color is Mocha Latte. And I really love this color for an everyday look. You know, the funny thing is about eye makeup on a day like today, if we are going to be singing outdoors, I always wear sunglasses outside. So nobody will see this eye makeup. But you know what? I don't apply makeup for other people. I apply it for myself. I just uh, find that having a little bit of makeup on makes me feel put together. It just makes me feel more confident and I really enjoy the process. Like I just find it a fun part of my day 
So even if people can't see it, <laughs> I like to wear it anyway. And I put on my makeup every single day. This is very much an everyday look. I don't do any fancy shadowing or shading on my eyelids. First of all, I have hooded eyes, so it makes it a bit challenging. Every now and then for a special occasion, I'll put a little bit of dark at the at the corners like that, or maybe put a little bit of, of a, a crease in there. But in general, I don't really bother. But I like this eyeshadow. It's just nice and neutral. And it's not too much, not too little, and I really enjoy that. Now what I will do, because it's a matte finish, is I will put on just a little touch of shimmer in the middle. And I'm just going to use the pink one in this little e.l.f. Uh, little palette. So I'm just going to use this, this shade right here. Just put a little bit on my finger and just put that in the middle of my eyelid. Some of you might remember that last fall, so that's just almost a year ago, I signed up with a modeling agency and the staff there were very encouraging, you know. I mean, I was uh, 75 at the time, but they, sometimes they do have clients who are looking for older women to model, plus size women as well. So I was encouraged and I had the photo shoot and the whole experience was very pleasurable. So there I am on the website with all my fancy pictures. Wow. And during the year, I have had a few opportunities because what they do is they send out a group email and they describe very briefly what the client is looking for. Now, the oldest requirement I've ever seen is kind of 55. <laughs> well, I'm not 55. I mean, I might look younger than 76, but I certainly don't look 55. Anyway, suffice it to say that I didn't get one single job all year. So that was disappointing. I was hoping to have at least one or two modeling jobs, just for the fun of it, you know? Now, having said that, there were some opportunities, but they were out of town, and they were considerably out of town. Like, I would have had to take a, you know, five-hour train ride or take a flight or something to Toronto, for example, but I wasn't really willing to do that. So... The year is up, and in order to keep my information on the website, I have to pay them. So I'm not going to do that. And, you know, I just look upon it as an experience, yet one of those life experiences. It didn't work out exactly the way I would have wanted, but nevertheless, I gave it a try. And that's the main thing, isn't it? To try things. To say yes to things that you've never done before, just for the fun of it. Even if there's no guarantee that it'll work out, you know, the way you want it to. It's still an experience. I lined my upper waterline with this Sephora um, eyeliner pencil. And it's a really nice pencil. And it's brown, which is a little bit of a softer color. I like it very much. I won't do my brows or my eyelashes until after I have applied my foundation and powder. And the foundation I'm using today is Catrice HD Liquid. And this is a lovely foundation. It's very liquid. It's a matte finish. The color is really nice for me. The only thing I'm not that crazy about is this dropper. But nevertheless, I'm just going to put a little bit on my glass palette. And you need so very little because it really um, spreads. And I never like a full coverage. I always prefer um, a light to medium coverage because I want kind of a sheer finish. I always I want a natural finish. So I start with the T-zone and I take my, my little sponge and I just press it in. And then I just take a little blob, maybe that much, and just rub it in. And then I blend with my foundation brush. And I blend, blend, blend. One can never blend too much. <laughs> anyway, so one of my projects lately is to read some classic books. And one book that I have never read, 
or had never read was Catcher in the Rye. Now, many of you out there read that book way back in high school or college because it was on the curriculum. And for all I know, maybe it's still on the curriculum for English literature. But <laughs> I went to a Catholic high school. And now, having read the book recently, I certainly understand why that book was not on our curriculum. The final step to applying my foundation, of course, is to use my great big powder puff. And so I'm just going to press it all over so that it will press that foundation in and pick up any excess. So you can see that it's a pretty nice finish. It's supposed to have a mattifying finish and I don't doubt that it does, but I do think that it's the glowing primer underneath that is peeking through, but it nevertheless, it's nice and it's um, very natural. And that's the look that I'm going for. Now I'm going to put on some of that e.l.f. halo setting powder. So this is almost too much actually, but I have this great huge brush. So I'm just going to make sure I work that powder into the brush and just sort of puff it all over my face. I just love using a powder. Anyway, so I recently read Catcher in the Rye. And, um, well, it's certainly a unique book. It's written in a very unique style. In terms of proper grammar and punctuation and stuff like that, it's, it's a little puzzling to me why, why it would be on the English literature curriculum. But I guess at the time it was written, which was way back in the, I think, early 50s, it was a very unique subject matter and a very unique style. So I read it and now I want to read some other classic books. I've read some of the Bronte books. I've read Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights. I think I started to read Robinson Crusoe, but um, I was asking my children to recommend some books that I read and they had a big long list for me. So I think I'm going to really get into that because, you know, this is literature that's been around for generations and there's a reason for that. So I think it would be exciting to read some of these classic books. What books have you read and, and do you have any to recommend to me? Well, that elf powder, of course, is the halo glow. So <laughs> I certainly do have a glowy look today, whether I'm wanted or not, because that's the products I've been using. But I'm okay with that. The next step is the brows and I'm using LA Girl Clear Brow Gel. And this works pretty well. I've been using this quite a bit. So I like to just run that through the brows just to set them before I apply the color. And some of you have been following my online dating experiences. One of my problems is that I don't have a car, so I need a man who has a car. And another requirement that I have, or preference really, I don't want a man who lives an hour or an hour and a half away. And there seem to be many profiles of people who live, you know, one or two hours away from me because I don't want all kinds of transferring back and forth and driving here and there. And, you know, I really, I guess I want just somebody in my neighborhood. So that narrows down my search, right? So I think that's kind of limiting my options in that sense. I am still on one dating site, the Silver Singles, and haven't had any luck there yet, but I'm on there, I think, till October. But my uh, profile on POF ran out, and so I canceled that. I was not impressed with my experience on POF. I did meet a few men, but you know what? I'm kind of okay with it. I've been single a long time and I'm pretty content. I learned this tip a little while ago to put a little bit of powder on the lashes. So while that brow gel is drying before I apply the color, I'm going to put a little bit of this loose powder on my eyelashes because apparently it makes them thicker when you apply the um, mascara. So I don't even know how to do this, so I'll just do it this way, I guess. <laughs> it's so much fun to experiment with makeup, isn't it? So there you go. I have a little bit of powder on the lashes. So let's see if I'm just gonna have great big fluffy lashes. 
I have one of these trial sizes of Idol mascara. I've heard wonderful things about this mascara and I've been using it and I quite like it. I'm not that crazy about the brush. It's um, curved like that, but it's not too, too bad. So that's the one I'm going to use today. I find the formula of this mascara is quite thin, so I actually applied two coats. So it's quite nice. It took a bit of work to get this look, but I like it. Next, it's time for the brows because that brow gel has dried and I'm using a Sephora brow pencil. And this is a nice thin one, it has a little spoolie on the end, which I always appreciate. You know, the Sephora brand products are really very nice and they're quite affordable, especially when there's a sale. So I have uh, quite a few of these Sephora products and have always really enjoyed them. I have some Sephora eyeshadows. I showed you that one single, but I have a palette as well, which I really enjoy. And they do have really good sales. And plus, they give you um, little samples, which is always a nice treat. This color is really perfect. It's taupe, and it's really perfect for me. And I like the way the color goes on. Just little. I really like a natural look in a brow. I don't like my brows to look as if they've been drawn on. And... You know, I want it to look like hair. I mean, if, if there's a little bit of skin showing through the hairs, well, that's nature, right? So I'm okay with that. The blush I'm using today is by ColourPop. And this is the um, Super Shock Cheek Pearlized. The color is 22C5. So there's not even a name for the color, but it's kind of um, a coral color. And look at that. Look how pearlized it is. And it really looks nice on the skin. So, let's give this a go. So anyway, about the online dating, yes. Well, I have been alone for a long, long time. But, you know, I have had some very... <laughs> I don't know what word to use. I mean, I could say dramatic or intense. I certainly have been in love at least three times. So I have some very good memories of my relationships. And I don't have the need to really go there again in a way. And I'm kind of content with my memories. So, <laughs> well, you can see that that certainly is a luminous look. With the blush, one would not need a highlighter by any means. And you'll notice that I don't use bronzer. I just don't. I have it. I've used it before. I don't know if I'm applying it properly. I don't see anything that it does to my face. So, And I'm just kind of in a hurry. Like, I just don't want to use too, too many products, you know? And the final step is lips. And I'm going to use my blush for my lip color because this seems to be what is going on in the world today, trending wise, is to have your blush the same color as your lips, which kind of makes sense. So I'm going to use my lip brush. I'm going to use this thicker end, and I'm just going to take some of this blush and put it on my lips. I will add a little bit of gloss do my hair, get dressed, and I'll be back with you in a moment. Well, I like that lip color, and it certainly goes well with my jacket. So thank you for spending some time with me today. And um, I'm off now to sing a few tunes with my friends. This group is a real gift in my life. I look forward to being with them so much. There Today, there will probably be maybe nine or ten of us. Sometimes there's as many as 14. It depends who's available. I love you all so much, and I'm glad that you support my channel. Thank you again, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.